it, it started. Oh, that one. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. Hey, guys. Welcome back. So in this episode, we uh, have a bit of an experiment. But first, if you haven't already watched the Lathe series, go back and check that out. It's awesome. But as we're working on this thing, we've realized we have a crap ton of rusty parts. And I think I've got a pretty good solution for that. Well, that's interesting. I think I have a pretty good solution for that. Mine are better. Mine is literally a solution. What do you mean? Well, I'm going to do it with science. Oh, OK. I'm going to do it with brute force. Oh, well, then I believe it's on. Similar to Donkey Kong. Let's do it. Okay, first up is this pneumatic spinny bit with a Scotch-Brite pad. I've also got a slightly more aggressive Scotch-Brite pad. I think this is going to be my winner. Number one choice. All right, I have one mechanical one. It's okay. I think it's going to be better than either of his anyway, so we'll just go with it. But uh, wire wheel. So for my chemical solution, I'm going to use this stuff, evapo-rust. Uh, never used it before, but uh, people online seem to like it, so I'm going to give it a shot. And the subject... The chuck from the lathe. Okay, for my last solution, and honestly, I don't have high hopes for this, is uh, one of these really cheap tumblers. Uh, I do have the high quality pyramids in there. Still don't think it's gonna do the job. And the subject is one of the keys. Let's give it a shot. Okay, uh, this is my top bet. This is uh, sodium carbonate, and I'm going to cathodize the rust right off of this using electricity. How does that work? Well, it's electrolysis. You know how uh, anodization works? Just the opposite, we'll pull all the oxidation away from it. Witchcraft. It is witchcraft. And this is my less hopeful one. Um, I'm going to be using an ultrasonic cleaner with a really strong base in it. In this case, sodium hydroxide. You might know it as drain cleaner. Uh, I'm giving it 50-50. It's on! Let's see how we did. All right, let's start with the evapo rust. Uh, it actually did really, really well. Uh, this has been sitting in there for about 24 hours. It got rid of probably 98% of the rust. You can see there's just a tiny speck right there, but really nice. Um, it's a bit of a dull finish. Uh, this was a nice shiny machine surface when we started. I'm not sure if that's a discoloration or if it actually ate into the metal. Uh, we'll polish that in a minute and see uh, if that's the case. Next up, the tumbler. Uh, this thing did diddly crap. Um, you can see it's not totally useless where uh, it did manage to burnish through the rust is actually nice and shiny. So this might be a good secondary process after the rust is removed. Also, one problem with these tumblers, you can see you can get crap stuck in little spots. So depending on the shape of your object, uh, that could be a problem. And it's definitely not going to be doing any polishing inside of there. Next up, electrolysis. Uh, this actually did really, really well. Um, the color isn't quite as homogeneous as the evapo rust, but there is no rust on this thing. And our machine surfaces are still quite shiny. So I think this is a really good option. Uh, I'll have to do the math on how much we spent in electricity to do it. Uh, probably won't be too bad, but something to factor in and cost for sure. Last and least, the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, yeah, it did nothing. I'm pretty sure this is exactly how it looked when we put it in. Uh, the one thing this probably is good at is removing dirt and grime, uh, anything that could possibly shake loose, but uh, yeah, rust, not so much. Maybe this is a, a, the solution we were using could be a part of the problem, so if anybody out there knows of a better bath solution to put in there, uh, let me know. All right, let's see how we did in the spindle. Uh, this side was the light duty Scotch-Brite pad. Uh, it blew through the rust pretty quickly, but it didn't take care of some of the discoloration. That's not necessarily a bad thing. This isn't, this isn't rust. That might just be mill scale. Um, but one nice thing about this is it's, it's pretty gentle on the surface itself. It doesn't do much scratching or anything like that. Uh, next up is the wire wheel. Uh, this is probably even a little more gentle. 
um, but took probably a little bit more effort. Still, still pretty effective at removing the rust though. And last up is this heavy duty scotch Bright, and man, look at the shine on that, that's awesome. Uh, not, you couldn't use it for everything, it definitely scratches up the surface a bit, gives it more of a brushed finish than just shiny, but uh, really, really effective if you're not too concerned about some micro scratches. So, let's wrap it up. All right, Mike, uh, who won? Well, uh, I, I did. did. And I completely agree. Mike, why did you win? <laughs> I'd say the Evapo Rust was awesome. Industrial product just worked. That's the way it should be. Uh, and the uh, heavy duty uh, Scotch Bright pad worked really, really well. Not for everything, for sure. That's like the most aggressive of the things, but uh, worked really good. What about you? I have to agree with both of those. Uh, the industrial Evapo Rust did a great job. It did discolor the metal, which I don't like very much. I don't know if it's eating into it, but in most cases, it'll probably be just fine. Uh, I love the electrolysis. It only ate away where the rust was. It left everything else in perfect shape. Yep. You know what I, else I like about that is it's really cheap. I mean, it you, is very cheap. You can buy a, a car battery charger for like nothing at the auto parts store mm -hmm. and you just have to make sure you get the right solution. All, yep. all stuff you can buy locally and cheap. So awesome. Sounds good.